everybody, it's Brock, and we got a brand new episode of All About. Happy Friday to you. Hope you're all doing really good out there. I'm so glad it's the weekend. Today, we are learning all about the green Nephia leather coral. Haven't done a leather in a little while, so I definitely want to bring another one to the table for y'all. So these corals are very similar to your Singularia finger leather corals. So this video goes hand in hand with those and also the Kenya tree coral. They do really well and hair wise, all of them are going to be very similar to this Nephthia. They are one of the most popular leathers people try to get due to their neon green colors in the tank. It is just really pretty to have. Prices on them, you'll normally spend about $40 to get a frag. And then for some of the bigger pieces that you get as they get larger, the prices definitely go up on them. So if you are looking for like a bigger piece, you'll normally spend about 60 to 80 and then it just keeps going up as the pieces get bigger. Care level, they are a super easy coral to take care of. They don't take much. They're also a very hardy coral, so it's good for beginners too that are looking for a nice, pretty coral to put in the tank. Temperature, you want to keep it like 72 to 78. You know, I like to keep mine right on 78. DKH, 8 to 12. pH, 8.1 to 8.4. And your salinity, 1.023 to 1.025. You keep those right, you'll be doing really well. Colors on them, so of course that neon green on the polyps coming out are what everybody loves to get. Some of them are so neon green, it looks like they have little LED lights coming out. I mean, they are super pretty. And then they're up underneath, their stalks are normally like a light tan to white color. So they are a great coral to get. Diet, so they are a photosynthetic coral. They're going to be feeding off the light primarily. That's where they're going to get their main source of food. But it's also really good to feed them liquid foods. Leather corals love liquid foods, so I definitely put that in their weekly diet. You know, reef roids is always a really good one, a little powder you can mix up in your water. But also oyster feast is one of my favorites to feed them. It's a real fatty liquid that gets in the tank and spurs around in your power heads, and they will suck that stuff up. They love it. You'll see all their polyps just close up around it once you put it in the tank. Origin. So originally they do come from Indonesia, but the ones you're getting nowadays are all aquacultured. So most of the time when you're getting them, they're coming from somebody else's tank that's growing them. Venomous. So yes, they are able to release a toxin out of their skin. It's not harmful to us when handling them, but it is to surrounding corals. So I would be very wary of their toxin because they can hurt your LPS and your stony corals that are near the Nephthia, so make sure you give them plenty of room to grow because I've seen instances where the Nephthia isn't even having to touch the other coral, it's just beside it and it's releasing that toxin and you can tell the other coral doesn't like it, it's staying shrunk up, it's starting to bleach on the side. So you definitely want to make sure to give them plenty of room to grow and not have other corals right beside them. And then on the other hand, they can be stung by other corals. So we used to have a tank that had them growing everywhere, but it also had anemones growing all around them too. So they would be fighting it out, stinging each other. But at the end of the day, they still grew bigger and bigger and bigger every day. So they can definitely be stung too. So you want to make sure you give plenty of room for each of your corals. That way they're not just having a fight all day, every day against each other. The good thing about battle leather is they are so hardy and they do well for recovering against injuries. So a lot of times whenever your anemones move and they start hitting your nephthia real bad, you can have plenty of time to move that nephthia or move that anemone to a new spot. That way they're not stinging each other anymore. And they do really well to grow back. Placement. So nephthia corals can be placed anywhere in the tank, whether it's at the top, at the bottom, on the side. They do really well in all spots of the tank. A lot of times people will like to grow them high. That way they grow straight up and they're not around any of your other corals. So it's always really good to put them somewhere where they have plenty of room. It's very flexible on where you can place them. Now current is really important. You want to make sure you do put them in a spot in the tank that does have strong current. It's what they'll love the most. It helps them feed well. And it also helps their shedding process, which we'll get into. Lighting, I would say medium lighting, even low. I would say if you're looking at par levels, I would say 50 to 150. That'll keep them really happy. They don't need nothing crazy to keep them growing, but they do need some pretty decent lights over the top of them. The ones you're seeing in the video are actually over two Hydra 26s that are helping them grow and look that really, really nice neon color. 
tank size. You can have any kind of tank size. I just make sure they do get really large. They leather corals, they never stop growing. They're going to continually grow for all their life. So make sure you have a tank that can support them and give them plenty of room to grow. And then of course, always make sure your water levels are looking good. Make sure you're dosing if you can't keep things like your calcium and your KH up. You always want to check those when having corals in a tank. Now getting into fragging. So Nephthia will actually release little polyps that will attach and grow from where they stick. But you can also cut the fingers and glue them to a frag rock or even get two rubble pieces and rubber band them together with the Nephthia in between them so that it forces that Nephthia to grab on and eventually you will no longer need that rubber band. I would not recommend putting the rubber band against its skin itself because a lot of times that Nephthia will not like that rubber band touching them and it'll try to basically rip itself apart from the rubber band so it's not touching it anymore. So if you get those two rocks and put the Nephthia in the middle, that way he's just touching rocks like normal and then you put the rubber band around it, help him grab on real fast. Now if we pull up this picture of a Nephthia coral, so obviously, this spot right here is where you would want to frag it. That's a really good spot. That'll give you one big piece that you can put on one side of the tank and it leaves one big piece where it is. If you wanted a tiny piece or a just a smaller frag for like a friend or if you're wanting to sell them, I would probably cut like right here towards the top. That way it still has a bunch of polyps on it. That'll help it grow and recover. But what I would not do is I would not cut these little bitty tiny tiny little branches that are coming out. Because the smaller the frag is, the less polyps that are on it, the harder it is for it to survive this propagation process. So make sure whenever you are fragging corals, just really in general, make sure you're cutting a good healthy piece of coral off. That way whenever it's fragged, it's not that hard for the coral to recover. Now one thing I do want to point out, these corals will shrink. They will basically pull in all of their polyps and even sometimes they'll release this waxy film on top of their skin. Do not fret. Do not get scared. They are okay. This can last one to two weeks. It's their shedding process that happens every once in a while. Sometimes they do it all the time for a while, and then sometimes they'll only do it like a couple times a year. It's pretty random. You'll normally see it happen when first introducing them into your tank when they're getting used to it. Some say it's their way of shedding to grow larger like the toadstool does. The toadstool will close all of its polyps up and look shrunk and just terrible for a couple weeks. And then the next week it opens all the way back up and it's almost like it's two times the size it was before. A lot of people say it's that. And then other people will say it prevents algae from going on their skin. So it's a good way to keep their skin clean and keep anything bad off of it. But if it does happen, do not worry. It's what they're supposed to do. If it does go on for more than two weeks, that's when I would start to worry and say, mm, this doesn't really seem right. I would start checking your levels, making sure everything's right, making sure nothing is going on in the tank itself. Another reason they would pull their polyps in is if they were not getting adequate flow in the tank. So make sure they're all out and about real happy. Make sure they're in a good spot in the tank. You'll notice that. And then also if lighting is too bright on them, they'll shrink up that way too. And then also if they're being picked at, that can also be a sign of them shrinking up, which could be a problem. I've seen tangs sometimes go after them and bite at them, probably because algae is growing up on top of them. So put them in a higher current spot. That way no algae is growing on them and the tangs won't mess with them. And as you see in the video, corals like the Nephthia, they can be hosted by fish like your clownfish. They love swimming up in them. They can definitely host this coral. It's really cool to watch. Other than that, I think that hit on everything that you need to know to take care of the green Nephthia leather coral in your tank. If you do have any questions on if you can have them in your tank, if you're unsure about your lighting or the fish you have in your tank as of now, please leave some comments down below or you can message me on social media. I'd love to help you out. That way you can get the best looking tank you can get. I love hearing from y'all. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Thanks for checking up on me. Thanks for coming by to watch this video. And as always, Make sure to like and subscribe. Tell your friends about us. We're doing great out here. We're learning about fish and having a good time. I will see y'all later.